everybody, welcome back to Daily Devos. I wanna start this morning by asking you a question. How has life been for you since you were saved or since you were born again? Uh, what's it been like? I don't know how long it's been for each one of you, but I'm sure it's been a, a little bit of a journey. I, if I had to guess, if, if your life's anything like mine, there's been some ups and downs. Uh, I bet there's been times that you felt really close to God, and then there's probably some times that you, you felt really far away from God. Uh, I bet there's been times where your attitude has been good and your attitude's been bad. Uh, I bet there was times that you really shine bright for God and times that you didn't. And there's probably some times that you wish you could go back and take back, right? <laughs> but today I want to show you uh, what Paul teaches in chapter 2 as he, as he writes this letter to the church in uh, Philippi that, that we need to be careful with our attitude and we need to be intentional about how bright we shine for Christ. So we pick it up in verse 12. The beginning of the chapter, starting in verse one, Paul talks about the attitude of Christ and how we need to have the same attitude as Christ. And I would encourage you to read that and, and dig into it real good and then compare your attitude to Christ's attitude. But in verse 12, starting in 12, going to verse 18, Paul talks about shining bright for Christ. And, and I find these words really encouraging. It's kind of like they, they put me back in the proper position with Christ and it helps with my attitude. So watch this, verse 12, it says, Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I'm away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Let's just stop right there for a minute because that's a big deal. Paul said this, he said, work hard to show the results of your salvation. Now we know the Bible teaches that we were spiritually dead and when we gave our lives to Christ, we were born again. We were given new life. We went from spiritual death into spiritual life. We went from enemies of God to friends of God. So our total position in life changed. And so should our attitude and how we see this world and the people around us. And so Paul saying, work hard to show the results of your salvation. So in other words, like people don't need to hear that you're saved. They need to see that you're saved. They need to see the fruit that comes from your salvation. So work hard at that. If he's telling us to work hard, then it must mean that it is hard work. <laughs> yeah. So he says to work hard to show the results of your salvation. Then he says this, obey God with deep reverence and fear. Wow. Do you know reverence and fear of something shows up in how you do something? When you, when you do something that God tells you to do and you obey the scriptures or you obey uh, maybe something the Holy Spirit whispers in your ear, how you do it speaks volumes to people. If you do it reluctantly or you do it with a bad attitude, that shows out. If you do it with a deep reverence and a deep fear of God, that shows out as well. And that deep reverence and that deep fear says a lot about your relationship with God. So obey God with deep reverence and fear. Then he says this, and I love this verse 13 for God is working in you. So God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. So you're not just doing it on your own. You're not just pleasing God on your own. So how does that work? How does he give you a, a, the desire and the power to do what pleases him? Why would he do that? That's a good question. What if that, that desire that he gives you is birthed in and comes out of your relationship with him? Or, or let me say it this way, what if it's what comes out of your intimacy with Jesus? You see, when you hang out with Jesus, you start to act like Jesus. When you hang out with Jesus, he influences your life. And Jesus has a deep desire and power 
to obey his father. We know that from the scriptures. So when you hang out with Jesus in an intimate way, he influences your life. And then you begin to get the same desire that he has because his desire is influencing your desire. And then you've got the power of the Holy Spirit to do what pleases God. So he gives it to you, but you get it through intimacy. <laughs> so in other words, it's kind of hard to get it if you're not being intimate. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Hopefully so. But it's kind of wishful thinking to just have some desire pop up from nowhere. But when I hang out with Jesus in an intimate way, mm, here comes desire. You see, my desire starts to become his desire. Or, or vice versa, his desire kind of overpowers and takes over my desire the more I hang out with him. So I thought that was cool. So watch this, verse 14. He gives us a few instructions. Do everything, say that with me, say everything, without complaining and arguing. Can I say that one more time? Do everything without complaining and arguing. You know it's easy to complain and argue today? Man, we can argue about everything. Everybody's arguing. Everybody's complaining. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Hold firmly to the word of life. Then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I, I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless. But I rejoice, I will rejoice, even if I lose my life, pouring it out like a liquid offering to God, just like your faithful service is an offering to God. And I want all of you to share that joy. You see, there's joy that comes when you do what God says. There's joy that comes when you walk this life out with God, with Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. And he says, and I want all of you to share that joy. Yes, you should rejoice and I will share in your joy. You know, the most fulfilling thing in life is to do what the Father says. You'll find more fulfillment, more joy, more lasting joy and a much greater reward when we do what the Father says with the right attitude, with the right desire, and the right power. Amen? So I don't know what your attitude is today. I don't know what it's been like for you lately. Maybe you're watching this today and you're going, you know what, my attitude is, it's, it's stank. It's stank over the last several months. What if you just let God change your attitude today? What if you just stopped right now when, after we pray and you just spend a couple moments with Jesus and you just share your heart with him. I bet he changes your attitude and I bet he changes your desire. Hmm. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that, that we too can have the same attitude that Christ has. That God, we can walk through this light, this life as a bright light. God, help us to do the hard work of showing the results of our salvation. God, help us to shine bright for you. Help us to walk in the desire and the power to do what pleases you. God, what I'm asking you is that you would help us to be really intimate with you. And out of that intimacy would come life and power and desire to build your kingdom and not ours. So God, be with us today. Lead us, guide us. Help us to discover the joy that comes in serving Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I love you. Have a great day. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.